Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I've got the need, the need for speed. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Top Gun, which came out in 1986 from director Tony Scott. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Maverick, played by Tom Cruise. He's a pilot in the US Navy and has just been assigned to the elite school of Top Gun. But when he gets there, he realizes he's going to have to clash with a lot of egos and a beautiful woman. You were in a 4G inverted dive with a MiG-28? Yes, ma'am. So this comes from executive producers Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer. They were kind of like a legendary duo of producers from the 80s. Yeah. Like hit after hit after hit. And you know, it, it's weird when you look back at Top Gun because it, it's a film that almost never was. It was an idea yeah. that they developed the script, which was wafer thin. And they, they yeah. took it to Paramount Studios and it went through like seven revisions before. Uh, and the studio head, even after that, just went, it's not happening. Yeah, you're not doing it. And it was only after the, the, the head of Paramount left and somebody else took over. Yeah. And then they were looking around at ideas and they just went, what's this Top Gun? Here's some money. Go make it happen. Uh, but they had to get hold of like the, uh, the US Navy government yeah. to get permission. And they had to sign off on it. And when they looked at the Top Gun script, they went, no, you're not making Top Gun. Yeah. Your script is gibberish. What you have in here is Star Wars. This is reality. This is how planes work. Yeah. This is how pilots behave. Your script is devoid of any of this. So they were like, well, can we work something out? Can, can we compromise? Can, can you give us somebody to help us with the script? And the Navy was like, no, we can't do that. And so they were like, what, what, is there a workaround? And they were like, well, you can hire someone who used to work for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it just so happened to be a guy called Pete Pettigrew. Okay. Who was a retired U.S. Navy pilot who had actually served in Vietnam and got confirmed kills. Right. He's actually in the movie as well as a cameo at the bar with Charlie. He's the older guy sat there. Ah. And he became the sort of technical advisor to the film. Yeah, And he yeah. was the one who went in and said, no, you can't have this. But you can have that. And they were like, but we need these scenes. And so he was the guy who kept finding believable ways that, that the film could achieve mm. what they wanted to do. Yeah. While still kind of stretching reality. As much <laughs> as they can. Yeah. Um, and of course, when the film was actually finished and it had its test audiences, it didn't do very well. And so then they had to go back into the editing room and just tear it to pieces and then wow. they were like, like six months after principal photography, they were like, we need to go back and film more stuff. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And this, this film was saved in its editing process. And then once they spliced in the music after the film was done, yeah. that is when the film exploded and played in cinemas for 12 months straight and become the highest grossing movie of the year. But it was a film like many times over. Almost didn't happen. Almost didn't happen. That is actually so amazing. And it's, I mean, you look at the director as well, Tony Scott. His film before this was The Hunger, which was a commercial and critical failure. Well, so yeah. the studio didn't even have any faith in Tony Scott to, oh to achieve God, this. Yeah. And I'm guessing it was because of his brother, Ridley, that they kind of just went, we'll give him one more shot. You know, this was, this was make or break for Tony Scott. This was make or break for Tom Cruise as well. well that's it. I mean, like you said, this film was on the... You know, it, it was a broken project right from the start. And the film companies are just like, we're, we've got no faith in this guy behind the camera and we've got no faith behind this guy in front of the camera. So we've got no faith in this script. Let's see what they can do with it. And I mean, I don't know, hearing about that, the background to Top Gun, kind of changes kind of my viewpoint on this movie. I, I imagine it would, yeah. You know, personally, this film came out at a time, you know... Like, I was a sci-fi fan, or I always have, I'm a sci-fi fan, and so Predator, you know, Alien, Star Wars, Star Trek, that was that was my thing. James Bond, you know, loved all that kind of stuff. And then 86, 87 happened, Top Gun landed, or took off, whichever one you want to go with, and 
everybody was in on it. Like, if you weren't a fan of Top Gun, you didn't know what the hell you were talking about. So obviously, as a, as a sci-fi fan, I'm suffering already. And then I'm seeing this film come along, which I don't really understand. I don't get the jokes. I don't like the planes. It's not really a war film. You well, know? It was one of the things, again, that the Navy were just like, you know, it needs to be... It, it can't be pro-war, but it no. still needs to illustrate the Navy and the government in a positive light. Yeah, but like I don't, I like I don't put it up there with Platoon. No, you know, or Letters from Iwo Jima, you know, like it, it doesn't glorify it, but but it also does. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. It like puts a spotlight on pilots and goes, look at how amazing being a U.S. Navy fighter pilot can be. It, you get the bikes, you get the jets. I, I'm more of a partial fan to uh, Wings of the Apache myself with uh, with Nicolas Cage, but we'll get to that point. <laughs> but what's what's interesting as well is when the film came out, it hit box office smashes. I mean, the song itself. The song's played on radios for months. Won an Oscar, <laughs> yeah. you know. It you know it did so well just for the way that it was brought into this film and told this love story. Like you couldn't get away from it. But then you hit the '90s, a couple of years after Top Gun's forgotten. You know, I well, not massively forgotten, but people aren't really talking about it anymore like they used to. They don't high five and wear the aviators and want to be a pilot like, like they used to because reality's sunken in. And so now I hear, hear more about this film. I'm like, yeah, OK, I've settled my decision on this movie and this movie is fucking awesome. I'll admit it's <laughs> been quite a while since I'd last seen it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, me uh, too. You know, the highway to the danger zone. Like, I still hear that song every so often. You, you just can't and get And when, away when from you it. press play mm. and put this film on, the first note hits and you just sink into your chair yeah. just that extra little bit. Totally. And you just get ready because the song kicks in, the music <laughs> volume comes up. And just the fantastic visuals, oh, you know? Yeah. It's, it's either sunset or sunrise yeah. on this aircraft carrier. Oh. You're seeing all these all these guys at work. You know, you like they're doing hand signals and things like. You don't know what they're what they're meaning. Oh man, like navy ac boys actual, are loving actual it. Actual na naval people have watched that sequence and gone like that makes no sense. <laughs> but visually, I don't care. You know, it was one of the things that the studio was. You know, that was like the studio and the navy constantly battling each other about what looks good and yeah. what is reality. Yeah. And they were like, we're making this film for mom and pop in Oklahoma, yeah. who has no bloody idea what goes on on an aircraft carrier. And I think it was the Enterprise as well. It is the Just Enterprise. to tie into yeah. the sci-fi. Yeah, you got uh, <laughs> Strickland from Back to the Future as the right. commander. <laughs> you know, and I mean, this whole opening sequence is bloody amazing. Like like I said, I tried not to sink in and enjoy myself. I'm like, I'm not going to enjoy Top Gun. It's not fun. But all of a sudden, you're up there in the plane. You know, you've got Maverick there. You've got Anthony Edwards playing a Goose. You know, is sat in the back. You know, and they are buddies. You know, they, they love hanging out with each other. They're flying at God knows Mac, whatever. I don't know speeds. I'm not twice the speed person. of sound, I think. Yeah, you know, in this million dollar jet, which, come on, was it an F 16? 14? 14, 16? It's that thing from Afterburner. It looks fucking awesome. Yes. <laughs> you know? And they get themselves into this situation, don't they, where you've got a couple of, like, they don't call them Russians or Cubans, they're just enemy MiGs. Right. You know, let's let's keep it in peaceful territory here, people. We're not trying to start an international incident. It's just, yeah, the red star on the side of these black jets look ominous. And you've got John Stockwell playing Cougar, you know, the pilot of the second uh, jet. And... The this, enemy gets a lock on him. Yeah, like he like gets a kill trouble. lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, he freaks out afterwards. Like, like Maverick has to come up and gets a kill lock on on that on that fighter. Uh, not just a kill lock though. <laughs> he turns <laughs> he upside inverted. down in his jet. <laughs> And he gives the middle finger to the guy below him. Gives, which takes a Polaroid of I'm him. Like, I don't care if it's unreal, if physically that will never happen. It looks cool. And when the music kicks in, bow, wow, 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 wow. Greetings. <laughs> Watch the birdie. Yeah, it's one hell of a moment. Yeah. And uh, and then obviously then, you know, they're they're flying back to land on the aircraft carrier. And some behind the scenes here is I didn't I, I wasn't aware of this, but uh yeah. they uh they had to turn the, the the captain of the of the Enterprise turned the aircraft carrier <laughs> and Tony Scott was there with his camera and he was like, What the hell is going on? Like I need my shot. Yeah, like I yeah. need the sun there. Yeah, come to me. And uh, so he radioed up to the captain, the captain was like, We're in turning. 
Tony Scott was like, why? And he was like, it cost 25,000 US dollars to turn this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, he sent the cabin boy down to his quarters and came up with a checkbook, quickly wrote out a check for $25,000, sent it up to the captain, and the Enterprise turned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they got the glorious shots of the of the MiGs coming down and landing on the aircraft carrier, which just looks spectacular. Yeah. Then, of course, Maverick has to take off, fly off, and go and bring back uh, Cougar because he's still panicking and freaking out. Which is, and they have, like, the nighttime landing. Yeah, well, it's a great moment. I mean, this is all setting up that, you know, Cougar is suffering from some kind of PTSD, some underlying family issues. You know, he loves his wife. He loves his daughter. He loves flying, but he would have been dead then. You know, he'd have been killed by this enemy. And so he walks into the commander's office and he's just like, sir, I just can't do it anymore. I'm sorry. And he hands his wings in to Strickland. And so then Strickland calls in Maverick and Goose and, you know, he gives them the rundown. Like, what the hell were you thinking? You you land that plane when we tell you to do, do it. But, you know, that was the bravest thing I've ever seen, you know. And so I'm sending both of you guys to Top Gun. You two characters are going to Top Gun. For five weeks, you're going to fly against the best fighter pilots in the world. And you're like... Oh, okay. So this is like a real place. This isn't just like the That's title of the movie, yeah. you know. <laughs> this is a real place to go to. And these two are excited because you generally feel it from Tom Cruise. Now, up to this point, Tom Cruise had done risky business, you know, maybe a couple of other little things. But he, this was his big breakout moment like after this he he spent a career trying to get away from this fucking character no, the, the audience only ever see maverick when they see tom cruise well, he's never escaped it i mean risky business i think legend was yes. just before this as well so yeah. he could act but this movie i always like like i said it me and gary said at the beginning it's been a while since we saw this like i swear the last time i saw this i didn't think he could act in this one every f time the camera's on his face the excitement, the emotion, especially in this sequence where he's getting ripped up by Stinger, yeah, yeah. you know, where he's like, oh my God, everything I've ever worked for is now paying off. Right, yeah. And this is where the film kind of, you could break it down like this is like a sports movie <laughs> yeah. because it's all about being, in sports, it's all about being the best of the best. Yep, yep, yep. yep. The real Top Gun is about teamwork and you know team building and working together. You're all on the same team. Yeah. But when you're at Top Gun, you're competing to be... The top best, gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I never understood that about teammanship. It's like, we're working together, but somebody's name is going up on that black. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why you get, like, the locker room sequences. You know, it's also in there for the ladies, you know. Basically, yeah. all of these stars walking around in towels, and they're sweating, and they're, they're covered in baby oil. Wouldn't get it nowadays, <laughs> would you? You know, gotta, gotta have some other sexes in that. Uh, Lottery. But that, but the thing is, that's like the look for this whole film was like they wanted supermodels. Yeah, you know, they wanted it to ooze sex appeal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they've said, like, what, what do you have above rock stars? Fighter pilots. Like <laughs> that's the lifestyle. You know, <laughs> that's the only thing above a rock star is a fighter pilot, and that's why all of these guys are super <laughs> macho, they live super on the arrogant edge. because they could die the next time they go up there. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to be that type of person to do that kind of job. Yeah. And uh, and so, you know, the, the film had some criticism about Tom Cruise being an arrogant, smug, egotistical son bitch. Which he is. But, uh, you know, he has to put on that persona he to does. be Maverick. Totally. But then as the film goes on, we actually get deeper into the character. And oh, we realise yeah. that it, it, most of it is like a facade. Yeah. Like he has to put yeah. on this image, you know. And I, I love that sequence when they're all in the classroom. You yeah. know, and uh, they're all kind of checking each other out. And he looks over and he sees, he sees Iceman. Yeah. Val yeah, Kilmer. Val Kilmer. And Val Kilmer is... Cool as oh, ice, literally. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's going to be Batman soon. Like, Tom, Tom Cruise is good, but he's no Val he's, Kilmer, he's no Batman. Batman. You know, and they're, they're, they're talking, and you've got Tom Skerritt at the front of the class, Viper, you know, you've got Michael Irons. Michael Ironside is badass anyway. With Jester. That boy. Yeah. Jester. You know, and it's all, they're just all eyeing each other up. None of them want to you know, give anything away or show any weakness. Goose is, you know, not great in these situations because as a family man, as a father, you know, he's just, he, it's just all jokes. And at first he doesn't realise how serious this really is. Yeah. You know, until, like, like they go to that first bar and the bar sequence is amazing. It's, you know, when you talk about cinematography, you know, and moments in cinema, 
this bar sequence is up there. It's great. It's another one of those moments where, like, you can't imagine Maverick doing this on his own, but it's like him showing off to oh, he's everybody got his buddy. else that's with him. He's got his, he's got his wingman yeah, with him. Man, yeah, man. Uh, and it's his chance. I mean, he's doing it like as a dare, not, not hoping like, it would pay off. They should but... totally do this sequence a lot more in buddy movies. You <laughs> well, know, yeah. it's because this is the way they got their drinks. And you don't know this at first that Goose is married, but he does kind of say it like, like I've got to behave myself and stuff. And Maverick's like looking around and he spots Kelly McGillis. And I didn't really know her much, you know, other than she's the woman from Top Gun. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she's the one that Maverick falls for. And she's in every, she's in that fucking music video a lot. <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> And then he just looks at Goose and he's just like, man, she's lost that love and feeling. And Goose is like, ah, oh, no, what, what? No. And the whole setup with the tap on the shoulder and then Tom Cruise starts singing to this woman. Like, that's how you get girls, man. You lost that love and feeling and now it's gone, gone, gone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. If you've you got do. the balls to do that, oh, that, totally. that you just ooze your confidence. It's all about confidence, you man. You sing. <laughs> <laughs> and you dance and then they laugh you know and it's an icebreaker yeah and every like I'm except a, when he follows her into the girls toilets now this, this <laughs> does get a little bit it's like oh borderline oh. rapey I'm sorry to say that I yes. totally forgot about this moment like the whole setup at the bar like he's smiling she's giggling he's laughing yeah that's all good but then she like we don't know her position yet but she knows Maverick already reads him like a book and he doesn't know this. He still thinks he's that cocky guy, yeah. poor in every storm kind of guy. And when he walks into the ladies' room, I'm like, dude, boundaries. Right, yeah, seriously. You know? Like, <laughs> and she has to kind of, in a way, physically tell him, no. Yeah, yeah. Go away. Which then leads up to the next morning. Like, we don't know how long they stay out for, how wrecked they get. But the next morning, he's got his, you know, he's getting his sunglasses on. As Kelly McGillis, Charlie character, walks down throughout the group of men you know and it's such a it's such a poignant moment i find because we've just been surrounded by masculinity since the beginning of this movie oh and right till the end as well <laughs> yeah yeah but at this point we've now got this strong female figure walk right into the room yeah and they all now have to pay attention to her yeah so you're the one it's bad. It's that awesome revelation as well, because you don't... Ne re I mean, you you see the, the legs, oh, yeah. and then when she turns around, you kind of have the same reaction as Maverick, just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I was hitting on that, and now she's here she's to, to teach boss. me. Right? Yeah. Now, in the original script, it was supposed to be another Navy officer pilot that Maverick falls for. Yeah, yeah. But of course, the Navy turned around and went, you no. don't have that, that's not happening. Can't have so that. then they worked it out, and it was like, it was a civilian advisor instructor, so that way the relationship could possibly happen. <laughs> Which it's the thing. same thing as well. I mean, it's just like, like in the real case, like you wouldn't have like them all on the deck of the aircraft carrier yeah. with all the MIGs flying around whilst trying to do this educational thing. Yeah, they're like, but we need the big American flag and we need all the planes there. We need to just keep reminding everybody where they are and what's going yeah, on. Yeah, we have to just keep <laughs> promoting how cool these fighter pilots are, even though we've got this character who's torn up inside because he doesn't know where his dad went in Vietnam, you know, yeah. and he's chasing this shadow. And it really all, I, I said this to Gary before we started recording, every sequence with Tom Cruise in, it's like there's a massive weight on his shoulders. Like, oh, there is. You have to carry this. You have to make this work. This whole scene, you know, is, is on you to make this work, to make the audience want to get into the next sequence and the next sequence. So when I look at like Kelly McGillis and Tom Skerritt and Anthony Edwards and, and even Val Kilmer, they're all doing really good, but they are going up against Tom Cruise. You know, like some of the sequences with Val Kilmer and Tom Cruise in the locker rooms, like even on the um, the volleyball court. Yeah, yeah. Like this sequence gets a lot of hatred because of the camera on the guys. But honestly, like if you're taking your girlfriend to see Top Gun, she's going to need something. <laughs> she gets everything here. You know, she gets <laughs> everything. And in fairness, guys, we all wish we could play volleyball. I'm Anthony Edwards with the glasses like, come on, man. We've got like one game left in us. And Tom Cruise is like, nah, I'm good, man. I've got a date. You know, he's <laughs> he's managed to woo Charlie enough through the montage of lessons that we've seen him have that she thinks he's... Because she, she loves him as a pilot. Yeah. You know, of what he can do with the jet and what he can tell her because she loves her job. So there's like this whole underlying issue of it's not just carnal 
lust. She doesn't just look at him and go, oh, I want his body. She actually wants his mind. And I think I like that with Tom Cruise's character where, you know, he's interested in her talking. So the first time they get together, I always thought was them having sex. But he actually leaves. Yes, right, right. Where are you going? I'm gonna take a shower. One of the one of the things that um, that that did badly in the test screenings mm. was that everybody wanted to see Tom Cruise bonker. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And so it was you know they, so that they literally got Tom Cruise and Kelly McGillis back, and they filmed the elevator sequence and, oh. and the sex sequence because they wanted to spice it up a little bit more. Oh. And you'll notice in the elevator sequence that she wears a cap. Yeah, that's because she cut her hair off. <laughs> so she looked totally different. I thought that with this sequence. Tom because... Cruise's hair is really long, and so they wetted it all back to make it not look as long as it was because it was filmed months and months later. Tom Cruise was already working on a Scorsese movie at this point, and they let him off for a day Yo, to man. come and film these sequences, um, inclu including the actual, you know, the sex sequence. You know, they literally, the, the guy filming it was like, I had to, I chanced it up one light, and yeah. that was it. It was like, we got to roll, we got to get this done now. Like, Tom's got to get back on a plane and get back to his film set. That's it, but that was it. Like with with this watch through, like I always said, for some reason in my mind, I thought they had sex, and then their whole relationship through the rest of the film with them hiding it. Like I was sat there thinking, no, they don't hide it actually. And then you watch the sequences where Maverick is like, look, I understand you don't want to have a relationship with me because I'm a pilot and it could cause problems. I'm the same, and he walks out. And then, like we said, we have that elevator sequence, which with the music playing is then playing up the whole they're gonna do it you know and they're gonna try and keep it secret but technically they can because she's a civilian contractor so it's okay you know and then they do they do have the sequence but at this point i was like boom he's lost his edge because we build up the whole goose bringing his family out and his wife is played by Meg Ryan, which I always think is such weird yeah. you know Meg Ryan turns up as goose's wife in Top Gun that's it and like they immediately then are up in the air and you're having this battle because while they've been doing the top gun pilot then whoever can take down jester and viper gets their name up on the plaque and they're the best in the best of the best sir um and it's obviously a a, a race between Iceman and maverick to who can be the best and in this one sequence they're following Iceman really really close you know, Maverick has no right in being that close to Iceman. And Iceman is following Jester. And they're pulling, what, fucking three Gs, whatever. I don't know how fast they're going. And they get caught. As Iceman pulls away, they get caught in his engine, jet wash. Which sends them into a spin, which they're unable to recover from. And as they attempt to eject out, Maverick fails to pull his ejector. And Goose pulls his. And he hits the canopy as it, hit, as it ejects off. And it's like everything builds, everything in the movie for me is built up to this point. You know, it's been fun, 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 great balls of fire. You know, everyone's having a laugh. Everyone's living on the edge. Love, love, love. And then boom, Goose dies. Yeah, you know, the somber music kicks in, mm -hmm. the funeral sequence, you know, putting the belongings in the box, the sequence where he goes uh, to Goose's uh, place where, where Meg Ryan is, yeah, and just yeah. the breakdown. Yeah. And it's more like her kind of consoling him. Yeah. It's like the wrong way around almost. Yeah. Um, it just, you know, and then he, he turns in his wings and he's like, I quit. He's out. Like, he, he got broke. Yeah. Like, it killed him. Which which I always forget about this part of the movie, you know, as well. When I was watching this, I was just like, oh God, this is... Well, this is, you know, the, the, the hero at their lowest point. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's how you do the story. Yeah, but the, for, so, like I said, I've watched the film a couple of times and I suppose this is always the lull in the movie for me because the action's been taken away. Yeah, yeah. You know, the excitement. But I was young when I first watched it and I didn't get it. And like I said, I, I always had this idea in my head that the movie wasn't good for a number of reasons. Now I'm watching it older... I understand why he's handed in his wings. Yeah, yeah. You know, I even understand how the accident happened. Because like I said, he's lost his edge. He's got the girl now. Mm -hmm. He's happy. He's in love. His buddy's here. But he's still chasing that that, that thing, that, that incorporeal thing that will show everybody how, how amazing he is compared to his father, you know, or Iceman or anybody else. And now, I like, I love this sequence where he's sat in a bar. 
and Kelly McGillis comes in because she's looking for him, you know, because he's added in his wings, and she comes up and she starts talking to him, and she's kind of, you know, they're talking has uh, like boyfriend girlfriend but also as like his superior i suppose yeah she's giving him some tough love to yeah. help him realize the choices he's making right now and he's, he's just like Pfft. and he blocks her he just fucking blocks her oh, off. Yeah, yeah. and she walks away and I, I i sat there like ooh, ooh, maverick you dick but it, like i said throughout this movie i've been watching tom cruise and he's carried every sequence along the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, the goose's death is a big hit. And I think it mainly comes from him mm. being able to carry To out. react to it. Yeah. Yeah. To, to sell it. Um, it's, I just want to bring up as well, like, there was an actual tragic death uh, in the really? making of Top Gun. Yeah. Uh, it was um, world champion uh, aerobatic stunt pilot... Uh, Art Scholl, okay. um, who did all of the, uh, a lot of the aerial, I mean, he, like all the films up to this point, if you saw aerial shots in a movie, it was yeah. a very good chance. He was up in his plane with a camera shooting that. Wow, nice. Um, and he was like a champion, you know, air, air, air stunt pilot. And yeah. he was filming, he went up on his plane, he was like, right, I need to film, like when they were shooting like the, the cockpit sequences, it was oh, yeah. know, all rear screen projection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all of the actual actors did get, like eight plus hours up in the mix for real. Nice. Um, but then obviously they shot all the cockpit stuff, like in a, in you know in a set. Yeah. With a with a you know with a like I said rear projection screen. But the, all of the imagery that would have been shown on those was to be filmed by Art Scholl. Right. Yeah. Who went up and he was filming the sequence for the for the spin out. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was replicating that, and all they heard over the radio was, "I've got a problem. I've got a very big problem." And that was it. They never recovered his body. They never found the wreckage of the plane. He disappeared underneath the clouds and was never seen or heard from again. Um, and uh, it, it devastated the film crew. It devastated, like, anyone to do with aviation knew this man. Like, Hollywood knew this person. He was the go-to guy. And it's a, re yeah, a real tragedy. The film is dedicated to him as well. Wow, yeah. Like, um, and it was, it's just kind of like, you just go, he was filming the sequence where a character, like, the only character in the film to die and 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 they lost they lost this guy doing that sequence. Wow! Yeah, man, that's. Woo. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, it's always tragic, uh, but it was just. It's just really sad. Really, yeah, we really never sad. Never knew that. Yeah. Yeah. But Tom Cruise, you know, he's hit the lowest of the low at this point, but he decides that he's going to go talk to Viper, you know, and really wonder what his choices are because he's really hit low, but he loves Charlie and he wants to stick around. And this is where we find out from Tom Skerritt that Tom Skerritt knew Maverick. Maverick's dad during Vietnam and they served together and you know he gives him the story about how they were trying to rescue some uh, some soldiers you know and he was shot down watched the plane crash and it's it's great I mean Tom Skerritt is amazing to oh, watch yeah. on the screen and it's really good to watch him go up against Tom Cruise and deliver this whole speech of look you know you're chasing this ghost it's eating you up inside I understand that you've lost your best friend, but honestly, if you're going to do this job, you're going to lose a lot of people on the way and you've just got to, you know, be happy with what you've got, which kind of brings Maverick back to actually graduate. Yeah, the reality. If he tells him, like, you turn up tomorrow, you'll still graduate. You've earned enough points. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he does. He turns up. He comes back. You know, he gets his head back in the game. Yeah. Um, but then that is when there is an emergency, an alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love it? I mean, these would become very cliche. We said we said as well before we started recording, this film kind of marked cliches. You know, it it wasn't cliche when Top Gun did it. It was cliche when everybody, when everybody else copied after it. it. So it's that moment where they're like, yay, we're happy. And oh, the orders come through. We've got to go. Yep, time to go to war. <laughs> go to war. <laughs> it's know? not really a war, but it's like a, a mini skirmish where yeah. they are actually, you know, it's the whole, you know, um, the rules of engagement. You know, don't fire unless you have been fired upon. Yeah, we're just there as a bit of kind of, you know, flexing our muscles. But you just know that the enemy, whoever they are, are going to turn up with, with a lot of people. And you get this whole moment where it's like, okay, right, Iceman. You know, you and your buddy, you're going to be flying this one. You know, you've got these guys as your wingmen and we're going to keep um, Maverick back just to protect the ship. And everyone's a bit like, whoa, do we want Maverick up there with us? I he's mean, dangerous. He's dangerous, man. You know, I don't think he's gotten over Goose yet. And even Tom Cruise playing Maverick, he's there kind of like, have I yet? I don't know. Like, I want to be here. But then again, I don't. And you get that all from him. So that when they get up there and they get this amazing aerial attack sequence underway which like i said it's not really a war film so it's not really scary or dramatic it's just a lot of whooshing oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, sometimes you're just like, who's the bad guys? Yeah, <laughs> the good guys. I can't tell anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it those, looks cool. They wore those masks on the film. Like, hey, man, I can sit here. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. When I said it, the film was saved in editing. Like, the, the editors were so thankful that they were wearing masks. Yeah. So they could get the actors back to dub lines that they could just put over any footage. <laughs> nice. Because the, the, you can't see their mouths moving. And it was yeah. like the film was saved in editing. Like like Maverick looking at Goose's dog tags. Yeah. That, that, they didn't film that that way. They just found a clip of him holding the dog tags and put it in, in edited there. when he's in the plane. So you had... think he's looking at it to convince him of what he's fighting for. I'm like, the film was saved in editing. Like, you don't understand how important the editing was. <laughs> That's what, because like I said, there was no script. Well, there was a script, but there was no story. And the editors made up they the did, story they it all after together. it was all filmed. They threw it all together, oh my God. <laughs> and uh, you do have one of the one of the greatest, like, dog fights. Now, was one, one of the criticisms of the film is, you know, we never see a single one of our the pilots that we follow in this film fire a single gun. They only fire missiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. only the enemy that fire the guns. So yeah. technically, they're a top gun. <laughs> Well, top missile doesn't really work as a top. It doesn't, does it? No. Uh, but the, they they do reference in the film at one point that like in Korea the odds were like twelve to one. Yeah, yeah. And then in Vietnam it was four to one, and then in this film it, it's technically like four to one yeah. again. So like the, these this Top Gun team didn't actually do any better. Yeah, like <laughs> you. I mean, it's just so coordinated this whole sequence as well about you know like. One of them gets worried, you know, and gets to, starts to take under fire, and they realize that they're like, you know, they've got a like one of them gets shot down. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, do, do, are those guys recovered? Um, they send out a rescue helicopter, which you do see in the distance when yeah, the other two are returning. I don't remember anybody actually but, saying like we rescued these. No, no, two actually, guys. no. You do see them. You do see them. They 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 rush out at the end as well. Ah, right. In the celebration, you know, one one. one Jet gets taken down and then Iceman is left on his own being chased by these four or five MiGs. And so then he calls in, in Maverick and Maverick gets up there. But then Maverick gets put in the same situation. Like he gets caught in jet wash again and he almost loses it. But he's got Tim Robbins with him now, Merlin, who was in the beginning of the movie as well with Cougar. Um, and they recover and he has this whole like, talk to me, Goose. Like, I need your guidance. And, for you know, you don't hear anything, but Goose basically tells him to kill everybody. You know, and so he he takes it upon himself just to start taking people the the mix down, and they he, he scares them off enough that he can get Iceman back, and then when they land, it's just like yeah, you know, Maverick's like the greatest pilot ever. He saved whatever country we're in or whatever war we were facing, and I always thought it was funny that like like I remember. Like I swear, this this film came out maybe just before, or you know the the you know, the um, Iraq Afghan incident, you know. So it's like it was supposed to promote war, but then they realized it wasn't a really good idea, right? You yeah, know. Yeah. So so now this whole ending sequence is just a big pat on the back for Maverick. Like you're awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Val <laughs> Kilmer refused to deliver the line that he has to give at the uh, end as well. He was like. You've got such a great movie and great characters, and then this cheese ball line of dialogue. You could be my wingman anytime. What? But he delivers it well enough for the cheesy line that it is. Yeah, well, I mean, Tom Scare had already delivered one before, anyway, saying to Maverick, I'll, fly, like, with you, I'll yeah. fly with you. You know, so that could have worked, but yeah, the wingman thing is a bit. <laughs> you can be my wingman anytime. Bullshit. You can be mine. Yes. It's touch and go there. But I get it. You know, I'm in the mood of the movie. At this point of the movie, I'm really happy again. You know, Maverick has saved the day. And when he turns and he's just like, yeah, you know, I want to, you know, I want to be, a, I want to be a teacher. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. He just wants to settle down now yeah. with, with Kelly McGillis. And they have that whole end moment in the bar, you know, and they kiss and it's the end of the movie. And I'm like, yeah, that's such a feel good ending. Yeah, it is yeah. such a feel good yeah. ending. Well, I mean, the the studio immediately after the success of Top Gun, they're like, second one, green lit now. Yeah, and then the studio, the you know, the producers were just like, um, no, like, and the you know the producer or the, the the Paramount were just like, we'll just use all the footage you didn't use of the aerial stuff in the first one. We're like we used it all. Yeah, like we used every Everything. last aerial shot we filmed You'd have is to in the film. The film all over You'd have again. to go and get permission from the Navy and yeah. do it all again. So like, oh, we'll go and ask the Navy, and the Navy said no. 
Like, we've got new planes yeah. and new tech, and there's no way you're putting that in a film where our enemy will be able to see the insides of uh, our new yeah. planes. Yeah, yeah. That and Tom Cruise asked for, like, a hundred times the pay oh, he course, received. Oh, of course, of course, Tom Cruise film. is like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you want me to do what now? Because I'm who? I am Maverick? And so now, what, 33, four years later, we are going to get a Top Gun 2, <laughs> finally. Uh, but, you know, the... the, the I, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to a Top Gun too. Like, the thing is, technology has changed. Like, the fact is, you can, in a plane, you can shoot a missile hundreds of miles away and kill something without even having to see what you've done. Like, the technology has changed so much. It's going to be interesting to see it portrayed, I guess. Well, I was thinking this as well. And after, after watching Top Gun, you know what I really wanted to watch? I really wanted to watch Bad Boys. And it was this... It was just because of this whole buddy bro cop pilot kind of relationship that they got so then i started to think of how they would go into a top gun 2 and how that would work especially after goose has died you know and i'm like you know they could probably go like i said go to bad boys 2 route make all dramatic camera angles and make it all flashy and action-packed you're gonna get some young stud who's in love with some girl and it's gonna turn out to be maverick's daughter there'll probably be a bike off at some point you know a jet off like you said the technology is advanced maybe they're trying to get rid of maverick maybe maybe he's drunk himself into a stupor maybe kelly mcgillis killed herself you know and he's he's i don't know but whatever i know is i don't think it will be as good as the first one. No. You know, but if it can at least... Well, hit, from the trailer material, the uh, the dog fights and the plane sequences look fantastic. If it can at least hit a cheese enough level, <laughs> it'll be on par. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ian, what's your favourite scenes from Top Gun? Oh, man. <sighs> you know, some of them are just really goofy. It's it's Top Gun, I'm not going to fucking lie. Like, easy enough, the, 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 the plane stuff. You know, I wasn't going to bring out because I figured you'd be all over the, the plane stuff. But the plane stuff is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> um, the bar sequence where he breaks into, you know, you've lost that love and feeling. Like that song, you know, was played a lot at discos when I was growing up to try and get guys to talk to girls. You know, and if, you, if you've got a buddy, you know, and you need to make your girlfriend laugh, you just break out that song because it's, it's awesome. Um, a lot of the sequences as well between Val Kilmer and Tom Cruise. I mean, Val Kilmer is amazing. And having to go up against Tom Cruise oh, or yeah. Tom Cruise go up against him. They have just such good playoff. Like that first moment in the meeting room, in the classroom, where they're trying, talking about who gets on top of the, the plaque. You know, the, that's right. I am dangerous is just... Yeah. Well, it's the fact as well that the two actors spent no time with each other on set at all. Yeah. Like... Uh, like Val Kilmer hung out with all the other guys. They all went out drinking and partying together. Tom Cruise didn't mingle with them at all. Well, he did with some, but especially not Val Kilmer. So that they could build up that kind of rivalry, that rivalry with each yeah, other, which yeah, played off go, into the film. So like yeah. that sequence where he goes bullshit, yeah, yeah. like that was ad libbed. <laughs> he made it up, like because he was feeling that animosity towards yeah. Tom Cruise himself. And so yeah, it 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 felt genuine, and so that's why yeah. they're they're. Their back and forth felt good. It's like when they comes in and he starts talking about Goose, you know, and about how his Goose has died. Like, there's genuine kind of respect and love there about how he felt about Goose. But he's also got to keep up this persona to Maverick. Like, yeah. I'm not letting my guard down if you're not letting yours. And Maverick's not letting his down. He's still they're wall to wall. Up to them being on the boat at the end. You know, and you can be my wingman anytime. It's stupid, it's cheesy, but I've I've lived it up to this point with both of them that I'm like, man, I'd watch both of you fucking fly together. It's Hell awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, and like I started also tripping out as well, like a lot of the sequences started to mold in with hot shots. Like I really like that bit where Tom Cruise is driving along with a jet and then he hits the bumps like boom 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 you know, or when he cooks bacon on her stomach and with um, you know, the song playing in the background, it's it's weird. The opening sequence yes. to this film is masterful. It engrosses you into the theme, just the visuals, the music, yeah. the editing. Yeah. It's magnificent. It really is like one of the best intros to a film. Like the moment that first note hits, you are ready. You're in. Uh, you're in for a ride. Uh, yeah. It's fantastically well done. The tower flyby. It's just great. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just one of those gags, you know. It's just like we're gonna buzz the tower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not buzz the tower, man. Let's... <laughs> 
That was great. That was great. Um, of course, all the flight scenes and the combat sequences were great from the actual aerial, uh, you know, photography yeah. uh, to the miniatures that they used yeah, wow. to the rear projection combat set stuff. Uh, they, they blended it all together seamlessly, so much so that the Navy couldn't tell what was miniature, what was faked and what was actual footage. Yeah. Uh, it, perfectly well done. Um, and I think like my last favorite scene was probably the elevator sequence because mm. it just oozed sex, you know, just the two actors just, you know, they've not seen each other for ages. They've been off working on other stuff and they put them in this room and just their eye contact, their flirtatious nature. I'm just like, like these two are just ready to bone. Oh yeah. She's and the moment that guy like... comes in the elevator and turns around, I was just like, this is great. Like, That's it. The chemistry is, is really working. Kelly McGillis is looking at this guy going... <laughs> that's Tom Cruise I'm going to make out with him before anybody else I mean Rebecca De Mornay had been there first I suppose and what was that bird from Legend from Time Cop as well yeah she'd done it too well do you recommend Top Gun I didn't think I would but I totally recommend Top Gun and I know that the chat's probably going to come alive like oh you're wrong Ian it's an atrocious movie gay signs underlying contradictions war effort blah Tom Cruise bad actor doesn't run enough doesn't sweat enough doesn't slide enough it doesn't matter these films for me you know you have memories of certain films i look at and i go am i gonna enjoy this and i'm very surprised by the end of it with top gun i was really set to not enjoy this because it's top gun but then the way I looked at it as an older person, the films that I've experienced from my time, you know, seeing more uh, uh, Tony Scott movies, yeah, you know, yeah. and understanding how he looks at films, seeing more Tom Cruise, Cruise movies and realizing like, you know, his career all really blew up from this movie to, to hearing the information, like Gary said at the start about what this movie went through to be made, mm -hmm. you know, I, by the end of it, i I enjoyed every single moment of it. So if you don't like Top Gun and if you don't like fighter jets, you're not going to enjoy this. But hey, you know, if you like it, I'll be your wingman. <laughs> yeah, man. This is such an easy recommendation from me. It was the highest grossing film of 1986. It played in cinemas for a year straight <laughs> and it's still as entertaining as ever. Fan. Fantastic cinematography by Jeffrey L. Kimball and incredibly well directed by Tony Scott. It's easy to see why Navy pilot applications rose over 500% <laughs> above normal after the release of this film. They had booths set up in cinemas with flyers to give to people. Join the Navy now! <laughs> Uh, matching the striking and beautiful visuals was a great and memorable music score by Harold Faltermeyer, mixed with memorable songs by Berlin, Kenny Loggins, mm. Giorgio Moroder, Cheap Trick, and many, many more. All of the actors are great. Such iconic roles as well for Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer, who really shine here, even when there's very little story to work with. Yeah, totally. It has great action, tense dogfights, and some good comedy, great one-liners, and a nice romance subplot. It's a real good, feel-good experience that's easy to watch and re-watch. It's so very entertaining. It's a classic for good reason. It's a must-watch, must-see film with the volume cranked up on the biggest TV screen you can find. <laughs> you spent now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews.